Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Always reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, um, good morning, everybody. Um, Thomas and I will present today the labeling system. So, uh, just to introduce ourselves, it, we are both working at the uh, Institute for Spatial Information and Surveying Technology in Mines. And, yeah. I will go on. So, um, if we're talking about Germany, the question is, which Germany are we really talking about? So, is it the winner of the FIFA World Cup in 2014? Is it the area of uh, you know, where German is spoken? Is it the area before 1990 or whatever? And uh, it depends. It depends on the discipline. So, the real question is, or the important question is, how to communicate between very different disciplines. So, uh, yeah, for cross-project collaboration and data exchange, the meaning of terms must be very, very clear. And uh, all parties need to come to a common understanding of the terms and find a balance between the widest range of possible applications in the end. And, yeah, the voc vocabulary terms have to be controlled, standardized. And the most important thing is that Control vocabularies allow exchange and combination and joint analysis in the end of data from various sources. And the tame various sources is very important because here the linked data approach comes into play. And that's what we are talking about. But how to reach this common understanding of things? Yes, yeah, so you have to describe your term, but how? You can do this using your natural language, as you do this the whole day or using a hierarchy or relations to other terms, for example, in a vocabulary or whatever. You can use links to some reference to the story that are still available online. You can do it with um, <coughs> URI and publish that and share it online. We heard a lot of that in the morning. And uh, yeah, use linked open data technologies to do that. And uh, you can realize that with different things. For example, you can use a keyword list, the taxonomy, a thesaurus, um, like a controlled vocabulary, or en enriched thesaurus. So that's the outcome of the labeling system we're talking about today. Just to give a short example, if we have some terms like uh, countries in Europe, you can just put it in the list. You have a keyword list. Then you can create some hierarchies and um, yeah, classify that, for example, in something in Western Euro Europe or Northern Europe. Okay, so it's one step more. Then you can build up a thesaurus. So you can have some voca vocabulary terms and describe your vocabulary term in different languages with different labels. You can make some relations. You can have some hierarchies and so on. I think we know that. And you can have an enriched thesaurus. So take your vocabulary term and link it to some reference to sorry that are available in the net. For example, for Germany, it's, I don't know, GeoNames or the Getty uh, DGN. So at that moment, we, re we really know which Germany we are talking about. Okay. So then one question will come up. So are there some reference to sorry available in the web? Yes, they are. There are a lot. Just some small examples, the uh, English Heritage, the Getty AAT, the Getty TJN, but there are a lot more. And there are a lot more, for especially in the natural sciences, so bones or whatever. And they are all available as, as linked open data in the semantic web and modeled as, modeled as RDF. And so we can use it um, in the polling data cloud. So. But there's still one big problem. Um, this um, reference to sorry are uh, mostly very broad. Yeah? And uh, how solve this problem? Um, and another thing is that uh, within humanities research, it is practically impossible to define a control vocabulary that cover all applications. I think you know that. And the most important thing is that you will never get a reference to sorry that is generally accepted. Yeah. So that's a very big problem. So we propose not the top-down approach like the um, <coughs> reference to sorry do. We propose the bottom-up labeling approach. 
So what's, what is this so-called label, labeling approach? So imagine you have a vocabulary and some terms in it. And this are, is modeled, for example, in SCOS, a SCOS concept scheme, a SCOS concepts, and so on. And on the other side, you have a reference thesaurus that has also some concepts and a hierarchy in it. And then you have some links between them. And if you link it via RDF, um, your vocab vocabulary term will become a label. So that's because yeah, our system is called the labeling system because you transform it from a term to a label in the end. Just to give a small example, if we have some um, terms like Sweden and Germany, you can link it via RDF properties to the Getty DGN and use their inner hierarchy like it's divided into North and West Europe and we can do something like this. If we're talking about RDF properties, the question is which properties do we use? And we do not re reinvent the wheel, so we just use properties that are available. So, uh, for example, the SCOS properties to uh, connect the uh, terms and labels inside one vocabulary to connect uh, to other um, concept schemes or to other resources that, that are available in the World Wide Web. So, for example, with the C also or same as property. Yeah. So, I think that's very clear. Um, so, in the end, the labeling system is a web based tool for creating controlled vocabularies using the so called labeling approach. It is a web-based tool for publishing and sharing <coughs> vocabularies and labels and URI using RDF, so it produces URIs for your own concept. It's based on the concept of linked data technologies and common LOD standards. And it's not provided by one domain, so everybody, you, can host its own labeling system and create some uh, labels mm -hmm. in the end, and you can pu publish them online or not. Just one closer look into the system, um, there are four different roles. The so-called agent, the user, an ontologist, mm -hmm. and the admin. And so you are all agents because you can sparkle all the labels into the system and you can reach all the labels via an REST API. <coughs> and then there are some users, they have to log in and they can create their controlled vocabulary and link it to some reference <coughs> sorry. Then there is the ontologist that imports the reference the sorry, for example, in an RDF file or important Spark endpoint, for example, to the Getty AT or whatever. And then there's just the system admin who, man who manages all the stuff. It's me at the moment. So, yeah. um, so that was a small introduction into the system. And now uh, Thomas will explain or show some examples from the archaeology. Yeah, thank you, Florian. Um, I'm, get, I'm going back a slide. Um, when I, um, what, what I tried to do is I uh, defined, or I tried to define uh, some use cases um, that are relevant for uh, the archaeological work in general. And uh, when I did that, I acted as a user. Um, so um, the labeling and this, I mean, um, the labeling system is working. It's up and running. It's a prototype, but it's um, everything's working. So um, I. Um, was able to um, define the use cases and, and work on this. Um, <coughs> um, and um, yeah, let's start with the first use case. Um, uh, I wanted um, to uh, create a, a thesaurus of time concepts for a certain uh, period uh, in the Neolithic in, in Europe. And the problem I described was that uh, the granularity of authoritative uh, vocabularies um, is not sufficient for um, yeah, my research questions because um, it's just too uh, coarse. And um, what um, I wanted to get out of the labeling system, or what I, what I wanted to do with the labeling system, uh, was um, I wanted to create a detailed temporal concept um, for my individual research question, and I wanted to define relations to existing uh, temporal concepts, well, to the authorita authoritative concepts, uh, for example, in the AAT or in heritagedata.org. And um, this was this small um, thing was uh, my um, basis is a linear pottery culture in, in, in Europe, and um, 
I have um, different chronologies um, in that area. First is a quite a coarse chronology where the uh, linear pottery culture is divided into five phases. And um, what I did is um, I created these uh, resources in the, in the labeling system and then I, um, I'm able to um, yeah, create a relation between uh, the um, basic or the base resource and the resource um, I just created. For example, the younger, longer, youngest uh, linear pottery culture. And um, there's not one uh, chronology um, in the linear pottery culture. There are more of, of, uh, of these and uh, even um, finer chronologies. This is, for example, from Kneipp. Um, he defined 10 uh, different phases. And um, this way, I can go, uh, I, can, I can define a graph um, of entities um, which are related to each other. And yeah, um, the ones who are used to uh, look at graphs uh, will directly recognize that um, these two um, chronologies are, are just um, connected to the base chronology. It's just because I could, of course, define uh, um, relations between this and this chronology as well, but um, I didn't because it's just um, not, well, didn't look good. <laughs> um, so, and uh, um, yeah, the point, uh, the labeling system is uh, capable of, um, it comes now, well, one of the points, um, I can now uh, create uh, relations to authoritative um, vocabularies. For example, the term linear band ceramic or linear pottery culture and the Getty AAT. And then um, I'm defining a relation from each, uh, or I can define relations from each of my nodes to this term. Um, this could be a narrower concept, bro uh, broader, uh, broader match, um, whatever you want. Well, you've seen the relations we uh, currently implemented in the in the labeling system. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, doing that, uh, I can, for example, uh, connect to the Wienerband ceramic, but I could also uh, connect to the um, where is it? The European Neolithic, I think it's it's that one, um, which is a broader term. And um, yeah, so I can um, link um, everything to everything. The question is, um, are there um, yeah, are there structures I can base my decision on? Um, how to link from A to B? And this is, um, I mean, currently there aren't um, because um, yeah, it's it's a it's an early discipline. So and nobody thought about um, problems like this before. Um, anyway. In the near uh, future, there will be two projects, uh, period O and chronotology. Uh, chronotology being one, uh, being a project of the German Archeolo Archaeological Institute and the I3 Mines, by the way, which will um, create um, resources, uh, well, um, around time concepts. I don't want to go into the details uh, in that, but um, yeah, um, we, we can expect um, gazet well, time gazetteers uh, from these projects. Um, but that's the future. They don't uh, exist yet. And um, if you look at this link, um, we just put it in there to show that the labeling system is actually working. Um, um, if you connect to this uh, link, you can access all the resources I defined. <clears throat> um, let's have a look at the second problem I described. It's an example from anth anthropology. Um, the problem is that the, uh, the self-created concepts um, concerning external scientific domains are not aligned, and um, that uh, thesauri, uh, aligned to a thesauri created by relevant domain, domain experts. That means um, <clears throat> that um, the concepts I create, um, yeah, are my concepts, but uh, the, uh, they're not. They are really not. Uh, not um, related to the uh, domain experts concept, but um, um, it would benefit if I could do that. So the expected outcomes where um, I wanted to enrich my concepts by linking into vocabulary hierarchies of domain experts, also to take over those hierarchies. Um, yeah, take over what, uh, or adopt the expert knowledge this way uh, or, and the structures or relations also. and. Um, Doing so, um, I wanted to 
um, interlink and uh, therefore, well, couple um, authoritative um, vocabularies. That means um, I have um, expert vocabularies from uh, from different domains describing the same thing, and um, well, I'm coming. Uh, I'm using the bottom-up approach, so um, I'm connecting to different vocabul uh, vocabularies, defining relations between those vocabularies as well. <coughs> this way, um, an alignment between existing vocabularies is possible. Um, yeah, the uh, second use case, um, because this is especially, especially relevant for the natural sciences domains, because they have so much um, uh, controlled vocabularies um, already. I chose um, the radius bone, which is um, a find we uh, often have in the Neolithic. So um, what we did is we um, created uh, the relevant resources, the human skeleton, uh, skeleton with uh, all the bones you, uh, you normally find. Um, we also have inner hierarchies uh, in our uh, thesauri. And then um, we looked into uh, which uh, vocabularies exist at all. And um, we have uh, different vocabularies from different domains. For example, here we have an, uh, um, a vocabulary that comes out of the anatomy. And um, yeah, um, these uh, vocabularies are um, yeah, designed differently. Um, here, for example, we just have uh, relations between uh, uh, relations without hierarchies, and um, these uh, three vocabularies have <coughs> sorry have um, hierarchies as well. So they are um, related, um, or they are yeah they are um, more well, they are enriched with a within hierarchy themselves. And um, what I can do now, I can uh, use my um, term and uh, relate this to the external, yeah, to the external <coughs> thesauri. Um, with, uh, with vocabularies that don't use SCOS concepts, I can also use um, um, RDF um, uh, relations. The use case three, um, this is about place types and place functions. I think this was one of the main reasons the labeling system was put in place uh, in the first um, case <coughs> in the historical domain. Um, the problem we face here is that we have uh, nouns or terms that mean different things in space, time, or culture. Um, and this, uh, these generic tags for, for specific meanings um, lead to an ambiguity you have to resolve somehow. Um, and this is often the case, of course, um, if we talk about place types. Um, depending on which layers of knowledge are implemented in uh, vocabulary, I have, um, for example, I have a different uh, approach. Um, it's, uh, and this could be based on, on historical agents or social political context, the context <coughs> of historians' interpretations, so or anything else. So. Um, it's um, hard to say what, what uh, is behind or what really is behind the concept. So um, what I wanted to get out of this is um, I wanted to um, add specifications of space, time, cul or culture uh, to uh, concepts that define a term. And um, <clears throat> these uh, generic tags, uh, so that means that generic tags can be linked to specific concepts. And uh, the uh, process of linking vocabulary terms of concepts um, then it helps the humanist to clarify his or her reasoning and the layer of knowledge he or she is representing. And um, what it did is I, uh, yeah, decide, or I, I chose a term that which is uh, commonly, commonly used in different archaeological phases, uh, times, and um, has a, a lot of meanings, or can have a lot of meanings. Um, for example, um, uh, it's earthwork, and um, there are a lot of uh, or there are authors that um, define earthwork uh, differently. Author 1, for example, um, has a, a definition which, um, for example, is for, for this author connected uh, with uh, dwelling and agriculture. Um, so so um, this, uh, this uh, concept has um, yeah, different attrib attributes. And um, these attributes are, by the way, also uh, described in the Getty AAT. So I can, I can um, 
um, depending on what, what I want to express with uh, the term earthwork, I can add functions or maybe also temporal relations. And do, uh, doing so, I can uh, define uh, what I mean with the term earthwork. Yeah, coming back to the, uh, to the question, how uh, to communicate between disciplines, um, we are proposing the labeling approach. Um, it points out the uh, potential of using LOD approaches in the digital humanities in general. And um, what um, I think really is um, the case um, is that it increases the awareness for creating and using controlled vocabularies in their meaning, and um, therefore aims at initiating strengthening uh, scientific discourse in certain domains, which is already the case in the natural sciences domains. But uh, yeah, um, we're just at a, at, a, at a starting point if we look at the um, digital humanities domains. Well, at least that's our impression. Yeah, thank you.